Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mining Now. I'm your host, Jared Downey. And today on the show, we had, I believe, one of the companies they own was has been on the show. And now it's the parent company coming on. It's Capital Limited. Uh, we've got their CEO Americas at Capital Limited, Aaron Austin on the show. Aaron, welcome. Great to have you. Thank you, Jared. Good to be here. Yeah, like you said, uh, MSA Labs, one of the divisions of capital, a very successful division. So we're here to talk about the rest of the story. Yeah, Stuart was a great interview. He was one of those uh, those guys I was like, okay, I could keep going, but I probably should wrap it up so he doesn't get too bored of my <laughs> barrage of questions. But he was a great interview. Um, when did you acquire uh, MSA Labs? Uh, that was years ago. That was about oh. five years ago that we acquired MSA. Um, and we've really run them as a separate division for a lot of that time so far. So I think now that we're in the Americas, we're really getting into kind of the opportunity to bring them together, especially in our operations in Nevada now. Mm. So we've tried to, you know, as you'll see behind me, you can see the, uh, the logos all together there. It is, it is a wholly owned entity and we, we are uh, starting to incorporate them more and more into our, into our processes, into our, into our overheads. And, uh, yeah, treat them just like part of the family. <laughs> yeah, it's I, I was looking through your website, um, and you have the obviously the mining side, the exploration side. and i was I was curious. I mean, there's so much we're going to get to today, but I was just curious how you approach is, are these different divisions or like are the same workers working on some of these different projects, or how do you sort of distribute out? your your resources and assets and to actually do all these projects um because it's quite a, it's a, quite at a large scale you're operating right right and in the majority of our cases especially in the past and especially in africa there really hasn't been a need to incorporate them mm. there's maybe one other site in the world where we have both msa and and the drilling side of the business there and they didn't bother to to incorporate that but certainly, as we're getting into into um, the U.S. and into the the work in Nevada, we do have you know all of those core functions: HR, procurement, safety. Everything is common to both Capital and MSA Labs now. Right, and and just on the on the capital side, are you like this? Your underground drilling, your ex exploration drilling, are these se are those separate divisions, um, or no. those? No, those are all together. No. All, all the drilling has always been together, and and capital started as capital drilling, right? So the name changed a few years ago to represent that we're more than just the drilling part of it. But all that drilling, the diamond, the RC, the underground, the surface, the exploration, the production mining, all that has always been together under drilling. Where did you get your start in the industry? In mining, I uh, started in 07 with Orica and explosives. Ah. They wanted to bring on, yeah, they wanted to bring on a, a, a quality person who knew, uh, you know, who knew something about quality and product quality. And they went looking at General Electric and, yeah, they found me and brought me into the industry. Oh, you're from explosives. Oh, you're from GE originally. I'm a former GE Jack Welch days. J Jack Welch days. That's, uh, yeah, um, I, I took a few lessons from his books, <laughs> yep, <laughs> his interviews. Yep. So I guess the, the next obvious question is how much of that, that approach, um, do, do you bring over into, to capital? Is it, is it all transferable or some things are, some things aren't? I, everything. Absolutely. Like you said, it's, he's written leadership books. I mean, you know, the Crotonville Development uh, Center that they had up there in New York. I've been through that. Everything that they've taught me is is certainly you can bring that through to any company. And I've always thought of it that way, that it was it was an honor to get that training at those organizations and at that level. And then to be able to bring that to other companies and see what an impact that makes. Let's talk about our heavy industry world tour brought to you by Savannah Equipment, supplying mining equipment worldwide. We are heading to events across North America and Australia and filming episodes on location. Email us at info at crownsman.com to be part of Crownsman's heavy industry world tour. Make the most of your broadband network by adding mission critical voice with TASTA's PTT. Trust TASTA Americas for flexible solutions that fit your needs and integrate seamlessly with data networks and devices. Take advantage of your existing broadband network such as LTE, 5G, and or Wi-Fi to provide secure, reliable voice communications with their on-premise solution. TASTA Americas, your communication and safety partner. Visit TASTAAmericas.com or follow them on LinkedIn to learn more.
Attention builders, we've got everything you need to know about the grit and grind of the construction world in one show. The Construction Show is where you can share your expert techniques and strategies to help keep the crew strong and construction sites secure. From foundational tips, industry trends, safety strategies to advanced equipment and machinery. Be part of the voice of construction. Book your episode and showcase your company to millions worldwide. Visit crownsman.com. Well, how, so what's the story of Capital? When, when did that company get founded? How did you, when, how did you end up there? Yeah, here. 2004 Capital started with uh, you know a couple of guys drilling in Africa and Tanzania, and it grew and grew and grew from there uh, to the point it is now. Um, my start with Capital, I talked actually it was at PDAC. I met the CEO, the group CEO last year at the PDAC, and just started talking to him. And you know through uh, through my role last year was was pretty similar in the explosives world, bringing African products and African companies into North America. I see. And so I, I imagine through that conversation that stuck in his mind. And when they thought about doing a very similar thing, bringing capital into, into North America, they, uh, they contacted me and I went through the process and I'll tell you, it was, I did a lot of due diligence, right? Mm. So first of all, talking to, uh, Peter Stokes. I know several of the people on the executive leadership board that I've that I've worked with before, and they're all uh, uh, top notch people. So that was not a problem. You know, been through the finances to see what was what and everything, doing the due diligence. And really, what I found is capital's kind of secret is that they have the right experts, and they're willing to take those experts into any area they need to and do whatever they need to do. So it's a it's a fantastic group of guys that uh, that does this, and they they will get things done. So you you were from the the ground up when expanding into the Americas, then, right? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this uh, actually, there's another question you said about them being top level people, and I'm curious what do you what do you mean when when because people say that it's one of those things that everybody just sort of goes, oh yeah, good people, but yeah. what do you mean when you and I mean it in the the sense that you're looking at joining a company. What stands out that goes, okay, these these are people that I will one work for, work with, work to advance their company. That's a, it's a big right. commitment. What do you act? What are the qualities you're actually looking for? I, I think the first thing is trust. Mm. Right? Are these people people who do what they say they're going to do, and whatever they tell you, that they do it. And so I know from working with several of the executive leadership team. That was the type of people. Um, certainly, talking to Peter Stokes here at the at the PDAC last year, you know, he came across as that type of person, and I saw that through the interview process, where whatever he said he was going to do, he did it, and and it not only did it, but did it without any any hassles or me chasing them mm. or anything, right? So they are an execution company. We are an execution company. What is the scope of capital? Like you're doing projects all across Africa. Um, maybe just give us an understanding of, of who they are just at scale. Right, right. So certainly drilling is the major component and that's how we grew up. Uh, all over Africa, um, I've been to the operations in Tanzania and Egypt. We also have mining in, in several places around the world. So this is, uh, you know, Caterpillar trucks and, mm. uh, and shovels, uh, accessories. So we do that. We have the MSA Labs division. Then we also have some other more innovative um, divisions that we're looking at what else is, you know, kind of within the space or next to adjacent to what we do now that can that can really add value to our customers. Did you know cementitious binders can be responsible for up to 70% of the total GHG footprint of mine backfilling processes? Now you can replace up to 50% of the binder in your mine backfill operations with Graybon, Graymont's new low-carbon cementitious binder. This lime-based alternative binder maintains a 40 to 70% lower GHG footprint compared to typical cement and can adapt to varying mine conditions without compromising performance. Learn more about Graybond at graybond.com. CIM is Canada's leading technical institute dedicated to the sustainability of our industry. Members enjoy professional growth opportunities through CIM libraries, publications, webinars, societies, and the job board. Experience the CIM community firsthand at the Conference of Metallurgists, August 19th to 22nd, ICARD, September 16th to 20th, and the CIM Health and Safety Conference, October 6th to 8th. Visit CIM.org for more information and join CIM today. The 
when you talk about expanding into Americas, um, that's I, I sort of went off, but that's what I wanted to get back to is how do you approach once you sort of see okay, this is a winning team. Now you're now you're on the ground. Um, what is the first? What are the first steps? In the, like, let's say the first six months of expanding into that type right. of market because such a big market, but it's also very small. Everybody knows everybody. What are those? Let's say first six months. What does your day to day look like? Getting ready to yeah. sort of push into the market. Yeah, certainly there's some entry things that have to be done. We have to get licenses and we have to, you know, do everything, you know, the the way that the United States and Canada operate, which is, which is very structured, uh, very regulated. So we have to do all that. That's one thing. That's what I call paperwork. And I don't like the paperwork side. (laughs) The, (laughs) the other part of it is just taking stock at what, what it is we have and what our value Mm. propositions are in capital and MSA labs. So I went to Tanzania, I went to Egypt. I spent several months there just to see how do these guys operate? What do they do? Why is it that people would want to bring capital or MSA labs in as a supplier, as a, as a, you know, as a supporter of your, of your mind, what would you, what would you want from them? And I really found, you know, it's a team of, it's like, I, you know, I explain this to a lot of people as it's special forces. It's a, it's a group of guys who go into these mines and they have people from all around the world, you know, who, know exactly what they're every bit of drilling or mining uh i have i have just several examples of mining in egypt and the guys watching the trucks and watching how many millimeters that truck bounces up and down because he you know if it's too much he'll get the grader in there and grade it because that Mm. saves tire wear speeds up your operation so that for instance in in egypt we finished that contract about five months earlier than than intended Wow. Is, and, and then how do you communicate that value to it? Again, is it, is it the, is it small world of mining where when you come to the Americas, there's people, I mean, it's also a transient industry. So people sort of worked everywhere. Right. How do you communicate that value out to, to yeah. the, essentially the community of mining? Yeah, we have, we have good connections and connections at, at all levels. You know, the mines need mine specific solutions. The, the the leadership for the global majors needs to see change and improvement in different places. And so it's kind of you've got to sell both of those. You've got to be able to let the leadership of the majors know that we are capable and that we will do it. And you've got to go into the mines. And you've got to meet with the people and say, here's how we're going to do it. And does this make sense? And what's your feedback? And let's work together to make a solution that, that works. What in in the North American mar- market? Actually, I guess just to clarify, in the like the African market, is it? Are you what? What, is, what are you pr- primarily involved with? Like, is it gold mining? Is it across the board, copper, lithium? Where do you sort of? Where's the where's the bulk of the work coming from? Right, most of capital and MSA, all of our exposure, not all, but most of our exposure is to gold. Um, but there is iron ore. We have some other. We have some copper. So that's that's kind of part of that diversification, I think, is mm. gold's been great. Hopefully it continues to be great. But yeah, you've got to uh you gotta look into other areas as well to stay to stay, you know, relevant in the future. Where do you see I mean we've done episodes about we've done quite a few episodes now about lithium, lots of juniors uh trying yeah. to get into the space. There's some decent support. Um on the like on the Canadian side, like the Ontario government's fairly supportive. It looks like some of these projects will actually get legs, or have legs, and might actually get underway. Um, what are those markets? I mean, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but what is, what do those markets look like to you at, from a capital sort of approach to it? Right, right, yeah, we certainly have a view. And okay, so battery vehicle minerals and metals, right? That's the hot topic, and and will that grow? Yes, it'll grow. Will it grow as fast as, say, regulators in the U.S. want? Mm. Probably not. There And there's other risks to think about. You need to diversify because, like you mentioned, lithium. Yes, lithium right now is what they use in batteries, but it's, it's you know, it's early days in, in battery technology. Could end up being some other minerals, could end up being, being different anodes and cathode materials. You don't know at this time. So we're supportive in general and looking at, you know, what we need to do for lithium, for copper, for any, you know, any of those metals, really. 
Well, I and I guess I'll I'll pull out the GE card one more time. Is that focusing on the winners fo- thing? Um, yes. How do you approach that going into a market? Now it's new. I'm I'm sure there's lots of <laughs> there's lots there's a certain amount of investment that it takes just to get into a market. Um, right. How do you sort of allocate time and resources? Um, to, to picking where you go, okay, these are the winners, this is this is a percentage. I'm not trying to get into your secret sauce or anything like that. Just trying to understand the approach to the market. Yeah, sure. There's, there's some that are just clear, right? Mm. So there's a lot of exploration in lithium right now. So that's a clear one. And that's where at MSA Labs, we're, we're starting to push that now and say, look, we can do lithium, you know, bring your samples in and we'll, we'll turn them around in a, in a you know, in a good Uh, good time um copper is one that's always been stable and no matter which way things go in the Mm. future with battery electric vehicles copper is going to still remain strong there is no replacement for copper on the horizon right so certainly that's part of our next move is in is in copper so it's both the you know the photon assay technology we use at msa that works drilling that works as well. So we we already have the exact components that we need to do something like copper. And it's just a from there on, it's just a geographic expansion. When we first started this show, this was you now we're getting into our I think fifth year or so. Um, innovation was obviously still at the forefront, but it was it was still there was a lot of talk. Um, it wasn't quite as I would say there was the first to be second. I, I'd pretty much have to hear it. Mm-hmm. Um, on every second interview that I did, people don't even say it anymore. Now I'm trying. I keep bringing it up, so I keep bringing it back. I should probably stop. But it does seem to me, and maybe this is wrong, but it seems to me from the interviews I've done and the people I talk to, that that sort of hesitation on innovation that that culturally seems to have changed in in mining, um, or at least somewhat. What are your thoughts on it? So I think you have to move forward. Okay, so. Fire assay is a is a good example. Yeah, especially with our labs. So do we? We still do fire assay, and fire assay is thousands of years old. There are new technologies, and for for gold specifically, it just hits such a sweet spot. So you're talking about turnaround times in minutes, not hours that you would take to do a fire assay. We're talking about reducing lead or, or eliminating lead from the fire assay. That's just technology at work, you mm-hmm. know, using using science, right, physics to check for gold rather than using this old method of melting it down and, and looking at how much uh, how much gold was in there. So that technology is is never going to go away. Things are always going to uh, to go that direction. And we need to do it both for, you know, for the bottom line as well as for the environment. What is um, the the other oh, one sorry. that I'll the other sorry the other innovation that I'll mention is it's getting harder and harder in North America. What's been kind of new to capital is there's not enough people here to do mm-hmm. the work. Yeah, and labor rates are going up and up. And I don't know what the answer to that is, but certainly part of our innovation is looking at how can we do things smarter and do things you know without all the middlemen in the place. Can we do drilling remote? Can we do, uh, you know, rather than getting your data and typing it into another system, can we just let that data go from the drill into the system on the on the dashboard and just manage by exception in there and not have to hire an army of people to do all that work? Is that what stage is that? Is that fully implemented in some cases? Is it how much further or another way to ask it is how much further could that go? That kind of technology go? Yeah, that's a good question. I think the capability is fully there. I don't think there's any physical physics or, or, you know, challenges in the technology that need to be solved. I think it's just from here on, it's getting used to it. It's learning to use it. And, you know, honestly, getting uh, some of this is regulated where the number of people on a drill, say, is is regulated. Mm. So you've got to be able to get not only ourselves, but our clients and regulators comfortable with this. So everybody says, yes, I see how that works. I'm not afraid of the, you know, the robot with the big drill coming at me. Right. So you're kind of 
uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're kind of alluding to that if, the, let's say, a regulation says, well, three people need to be on this site, but then you invest in a technology that gets it down to two people, you still have to have three people even though you're tech, you've invested in this technology. Un, yep. Until you talk to them, until they understand it, they accept it, maybe change the regulations. That is, that's the way it works. Well, that's the, and then that's uh, sort of a, a a sister to that question would be when you you've invested in assets over years, you know, drill assets and training and everything. Now you you run into situations where as the innovation accelerates, you have companies that go, okay, well, we need this, this, and this. And now it's like to get the, to basically to deploy the operation, you need to invest in a whole bunch of new sort of technology and gear and retrofitting. Is that mm. part of the, sort of the, the, I guess the challenge of, of today's world once this innovation really starts to accelerate? If that makes sense, that might, might not be an issue at all. I'm just more curious. You know, it's uh, equipment always wears out. You're always replacing units. So to some extent, I mean, that that may s help slow it down as well. Uh, but like I say, the technology is not going away. We're not going to go backwards in technology right. ever. So it's there and, and it will, whether or not capital pushes, it'll eventually happen. With us pushing it, we kind of are able to control our destiny there. Right, right. What, how do you approach the, how do you approach the work shortage? I'm I'm very curious on that because that is, I mean, if there's a challenge that I hear from pretty much everybody I talk to, that's the one. All these great companies and they're trying to find these spots. They're good paying jobs, but there's got to be someone yep. that's actually willing to to do it. Yeah, I would say. Um, so I'll give you the example that I that I have from our our Nevada operations right now is the people who come in, the drillers who come into that operation. They're excited because they haven't seen a drilling contractor there in decades, a new drilling contractor there in decades. Uh, Some of them isn't, have never seen a new machine a new <laughs> drill. So, you know, it's a lot of guys who are thinking, you know, I want to contribute. I want to grow this business from the beginning. And that's that's maybe a differentiator in the labor force there. They see somebody coming in and we treat them well. We, you know. We are big on making sure they've got their safety gear, they've got branded, everything is branded, that it's a that it's a very professional looking company and that these guys are a part of that and feel like they're a part of that. And you're just before I wrap up the interview, I was just sort of curious, um, in your career, what what sort of keeps you motivated now? Like talking to you, you go know, it's clear you still have energy and you know you're you're taking on a, a quite a challenging. I mean, I could see the rewards um, are clear, but but it's, it's also challenging. Entering a new market is not an easy thing. It doesn't matter how much money you have, how many resources, how well connected you are. There's just a certain amount of headaches that go into it. Do you enjoy that part of of the role? Those challenges. I, I do. It's I've seen it done wrong so many times, and probably been on the receiving end of it being done wrong so many times. There's no need for that. There's no need for all the pain mm. or, or most of the pain, right? There's always going to be some pain, but I want the challenges to be positive. I don't want the challenges mm. to be because of something, you know, that, that leadership is doing stupid or somebody doesn't understand and putting it in place and just causing pain. So I really enjoy what I enjoy about this job and any job is getting in, making it right for the people, making it right for our people, making it right for the client. And making it just work so smooth that you're avoiding a lot of that pain. And all the challenges then are positive. Let's go get growth. Let's tackle right. this challenge and make it work. You know, it's not it's not a it's not a show up for work and try and solve a problem because so and so didn't do something or the system doesn't do something. I want it to be all positive energy. This is where I'm going to draw this right back to capital into pushing into a new market. That must be a very key part of your job, going to your team and saying from basically top and bottom is going, this is what needs to happen. This is where we're falling short. That must be a very interesting part of your role right now. It, exactly, exactly. And it is, and I think capital appreciates that. Um, coming from Africa, where there isn't the infrastructure and there isn't you right. know, some of the things that are available, now doing business in the U.S. and Canada, there's a lot of options that are open. Mm. And the system is set up to work with, that type of technology and with those type of, you know, even, even, uh, you know, city, county, state permits and, and stuff like that. 
that's all there for a reason. And all you need to do is figure out what the system is and work with it and it, it'll go smooth. Right. And, and you, and then communicating that back to their team so that they like the, the head at capital can go, okay, this is, this is a, the process here. It might not be over here, but it is right. You know, um, and they've been very supportive of that. Yeah. When I come with something like that, they've supported everything so far that I've come with. So they, they don't have a problem doing it that way. They realize, you know, they know what they don't know and they don't know about doing business in the U S and Canada. So they take my word for that. And they're, they're extremely supportive. They put the people on it. And in some cases they've said, we look now that we see it done that way, mm. let's do that in other areas. That right. It starts well. to bleed over. Yeah. Um, just before I let you go, what's, what does growth look like from your side for capital in the Americas? What's, what do you sort of envision over the next, or what, the, what is the goal vision for the next few years? Yeah, yeah. It, look, we will look for growth. Um, we're, we're currently at kind of a, okay, let me separate it out. In Canada, we're absolutely open to growth and looking for that growth. That's why we're here at PDAC, partially. The, in the U.S. right now, we are laser focused on getting this Nevada operations mm. up and running. We're going from, I was employee number one in the U.S. back in November, we'll have 300 or 400 people in Nevada in a year's time. Wow. That's already a lot of growth and takes a lot of the energy and a lot of, a lot of our focus. We've turned away RFPs in the area. I, I hate to do it. And I, I always call them directly and explain, but right now we need wow. to, we need to focus and we need to execute. And then we'll, then we'll, that will enable us to grow for sure. It's very exciting. It's quite a special thing for me, and I've said it to other people on the show, um, but it doesn't get any less true no matter how many times I say it. it. It's quite an honor for me. I used to go to trade shows back when I was basically peddling um, you know, mining equipment and that sort of thing, yep. and that was great. And I used to just have these kind of conversations, but without getting paid and without a camera on me. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's quite fun for me to be able to do this job because uh, I get to just pick your brain for 40 minutes and, and hopefully the trade-off is promote uh, what you're doing in the market. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, Aaron, I hope we do it again. Yeah, Jared, I appreciate the time. And it was, it was great talking with you. It's, I, I always love explaining this to people. So this will help us get that message out. Yes, sir. Th and okay, thank you everybody for watching. Of course, we're going to put a link to uh, to Capital's website. I think it's just oh, it's it's actually capdrill.com. So that'll be in right. the in the uh, description. We're going to have their company LinkedIn. We've got Aaron's LinkedIn here as well. So we'll link that if you want to uh, connect directly with him. Uh, it's a growing company, an expanding company um, within the Americas. Very exciting. Hopefully, they're going to be back on again. And thank you everybody for watching. We'll see you on the next episode of Mining Now.